The age of Camelot is over. As the first wave of baby boomers found their voice, youth and optimism gave way to protests and challenges. The Civil Rights Act, Vietnam, the draft, Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, the Democratic Convention, Kent State, Watergate, Roe versus Wade. It was a violent time in America, with too many voices being silenced. But it had its great moments. Ed Sullivan introduced youngsters from Liverpool, and 71 million people watched. Music evolved from Woodstock to disco. A man landed on the moon. Secretariat won the Triple Crown. The country celebrated its 200th birthday, and the Star Wars saga was born. Our appliances came in color, and so did our TVs, although you couldn't see an ad for a cigarette anymore. In a garage, two childhood friends started a little company called Microsoft. And in an office building in Washington, D.C., some burglars got caught in the wrong office at the wrong time. Seventy million baby boomers come of age, and youth drives change, unrelenting change. There is social conflict, protest, civil rights, the draft, the first Earth Day, Watergate, Roe v. Wade, women's lib. It's the era of hot pants, the pill, hippies, disco, the smiley face, the Pepsi generation. Promotions respond to, one, price consciousness, with discounts, coupons, BOGOs, and the first FSI, flag waivers. And two, to youth, a new target audience, driven by self-determination and an expectation of choice. In 1962, the first Walmart, Kmart, and Target stores opened. The seeds for national mass merchandise are sown. 1964, Hess Oil issues its first iconic die-cast trucks, now worth around $2,000. S&H Green Stamps issues three times as many stamps as the post office. The S&H catalog becomes the largest single publication in the U.S. Cigarette ads are banned from TV in 1971, and ad budgets shift to promotion, sponsorship, direct marketing, retail display and print. 1973, Campbell's Soup launches labels for education, blending continuity with cause marketing. Pepsi fields the Pepsi Challenge, sampling disguised as a blind taste test, and gains share from Coca-Cola in supermarkets. McDonald's launches Happy Meals in 1979 and quickly becomes the world's largest toy manufacturer. The same year, P&G sponsors Special Olympics, issuing coupons that make a donation with each purchase. After 42 years as the Premium Advertising Association of America, PMA becomes Promotion Marketing Association of America in 1976, and we dropped the Of America in the mid-90s. PMA starts both the annual marketing conference and the annual law conference in 1978. Social conscious touches marketing, environmentalism blossoms, brands take promotional cues from consumer values. And soon, half a world away, a wall will come down. The new decade brought an actor to the White House and optimism returned. The economy and the stock market pick up. In Lake Placid, a miracle occurs, a precursor to the breakup of the Soviet Union and the Berlin Wall coming down. Cable television changes viewing habits, and 24-7 stations defy the naysayers. TV brings us the car chase of the century and the trail that followed. The computer becomes personal, and a company stops Super Bowl traffic with a 60-second spot as important to the viewer experience as the game itself. Technology quickly progresses. The internet enters our lives, along with the cell phone. Was it only 20 years ago? Products and brands change too. Ma Bell broke up. Coke tried a new taste. Memorizing trivia was in. A woman was nominated for vice president. 
a governor from Arkansas was elected president. Hanging chads got in the way of another president. And all the world worried about Y2K. Technology drives change. From, from IBM's first PC in 1981 to Apple's Mac in 1984, of course. And Gen X, born between 1962 and 1982, is adept with technology. Promotion strategy begins to evolve. It's longer term, more integrated, brand building. New disciplines emerge. Loyalty marketing, product placement, and entertainment marketing. 1981, American Airlines launches Advantage, the first ever frequent flyer program. It creates a new currency, miles. Grocers start experimenting with frequent shopper cards. In 1982, E.T. nibbles on Reese's Pieces, and a product placement feeding frenzy begins. In 1983, PMA creates the Reggie Awards to honor the 10 best promotion campaigns in the country. In 1984, the Olympics open to corporate sponsorship for the first time, signing 34 proud sponsors for the Summer Games in Los Angeles. 1988, Kmart and CBS run Watch and Win, match the numbers on air with numbers in Kmart circular, and one in 20 households play along. Supermarket scanners get wider distribution and deeper data. Retailers flex their muscle and control more of the conversation with consumers. Manufacturers respond with category management and account-specific marketing. Cautionary tales emerge. New Coke debuts in 1985, and consumer backlash quickly kills it. It's the foreshadowing of word of mouth and the growing power of the consumer. Traditional media fragments. Direct marketing shifts from the envelope to the screen. Marketing becomes a targeted two-way conversation, and consumers savor individual choice. In 1991, the internet becomes public and changes everything. The information age explodes. We're a global village, a 24-7 economy, always on. Commerce and marketing migrate online. Bricks become clicks. Meanwhile, offline, retailers consolidate. Big box chains replace independence. Dollar stores emerge. In 1992, pop culture influenced Bark to run the Soviet Union going out of business sale. So Bark took, its took a took from the headlines the collapse of the Soviet empire and turned authentic artifacts into premiums. Bark wins the super edgy. Marketers also begin to understand that loyalty marketing is more than continuity of purchase. It's about creating an emotional relationship with the brand. Experiential marketing comes of age. In 1994, Saturn invited its owners to a homecoming in Spring Hill, Tennessee, to see where their cars were made. 40,000 came, proving that brand equity can be a living, breathing experience. And Saturn wins a Super Reggie. New product introductions are over-the-top PR events. Windows 95 launch included simultaneous events in Australia, Cuba, Poland, the UK, and US. Jay Leno created a webcast at Redmond headquarters to coincide with Midnight Madness store openings in the US. Microsoft sold one million copies on opening weekend. M&M Mars celebrates the birth of blue M&Ms by turning the lights of the Empire State Building in New York blue. Pepsi Stuff launches in 1996. McDonald's has a run on its Teeny Beanie Babies Happy Meals in 1997. 1998, Google launches, COPPA becomes law, and marketers need parents' permission to interact with kids under 13. There are new elements for marketing and new models for retail. Amazon, eBay, PayPal. In 2000, Survivor debuts, spawning both reality TV and televised product placement. Marketing and pop culture fuse ever tighter. We are doing well until...
September 11th of 2001 changed America forever. Overnight, much of what we took for granted changed. The Daily Mail becomes a threat. Airline travel means long security lines, and an abandoned car or parcel sends alarms. We suffered through two recessions, the collapse of long-standing businesses and a housing crisis. Mother Nature unleashed her fury. Global warming, Hurricane Katrina, earthquakes and tsunamis in Haiti, Chile, the Pacific, and Indian Ocean. Yet, the world also reached out and touched each other. There are signs of compassion as volunteers across the globe help those in need. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter create entirely new modes of communication and writing style. And across North Africa, these are the media that facilitate a revolution for freedom. The hardware keeps up with our seemingly insatiable need to be connected. From iPod to iPhone, from the iTouch to the iPad. Wi-Fi allows freedom of movement, and DVRs, TiVo, and Hulu allow us freedom from prime time. The faces of our nation change too. We have an African-American president, a woman secretary of state, and an emerging multicultural majority. We are a resilient and entrepreneurial society. Economic and business frailty open up new global opportunities. Emerging countries become the new frontier. More highly educated populations develop new technology. And there is a new order to the world economy. Nine Eleven changes American culture forever. Much of the decade's news stories cover consistent themes and spread fear. Fear of terrorism, anxiety over recession and unemployment, and the aftermath of natural disasters. Amid the uncertainty, mistrust, and cynicism, six coping mechanisms evolve. One, social media grows and people trust friends' opinions more than marketing messages. YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Foursquare build communities, a new form of connection, and marketers try to harness it. Two, individuals take control. User-generated content takes over, even the Super Bowl. Brands increasingly take their cue from consumers and adopt more of consumers' values. In 2006, when Doritos first crashes the Super Bowl, its winning ad is shot on a budget of $12. Yes, $12. Three, social conscience evolves as a cultural and marketing force. Consumers want to make the world better. They think brands should make the world better, too. Corporate social responsibility emerges. Coke and Warner Brothers spend $150 million to donate books to school and, of course, promote Harry Potter. Brands line up behind Susan G. Komen Foundation. P&G and UNICEF launch one pack equals one vaccine, providing 30 million inoculations in third world countries. Local causes get a national stage through Amex, Members Project, and Pepsi Refresh. Four, shoppers get frugal. They plan ahead, shop online, switch to private label. Shopper marketing explodes. Brands walk the full path to purchase. And the first moment of truth is the holy grail. Black Friday emerges as its own national holiday and cultural event. Five, we hunger for fun. Event marketing flourishes, reaching consumers where they work and play, engaging in unexpected ways. Charmin's bathroom in Times Square. Burger King subservient chicken. Target's holiday boutique on a Hudson River barge. Coke's GPS can finds you wherever you are, maybe by helicopter. And six, personal information is a new form of currency. 
for all, <clears throat> excuse me, for all the inquiries into our privacy, the constant requests for email addresses and zip codes, consumers expect marketers to provide something in exchange. It's interesting to reflect how marketing currency has changed from trading stamps to miles to information. Online promotion gets sophisticated, embedded into every marketing plan. In 2001, iPod debuts. 2002, American Idol debuts. The original text to vote and a watershed event for text messaging. In 2006, Twitter launches, and by 2010, there are 50 million tweets per day. In 2007, Apple unveils the iPhone, and Mad Men debuts the same year. And last year, Old Spice posted Isaiah Mustafa on YouTube, in a bath towel, to respond directly to celebrity and fan requests from Demi Moore, Ellen DeGeneres, George Stephanopoulos, Apollo Ono on Facebook and Twitter. You see how marketing and culture are so entwined, how pop culture influences marketing and marketing changes pop culture, which brings us roughly to today. So what's next? Consumers will lead the conversation. They want information, immediate gratification, entertainment, connection, and transparency. And they want something of value for their times. Brands will endeavor to provide. Things do not change. We change. Marketing is on demand. Customer service is the new marketing frontier. One disgruntled tweet, blog post, product review can mushroom in a nanosecond. Complaints get answered faster, and brand reputation gets hit harder. There is nothing wrong with change, if it is in the right direction. Technology carries and transforms our culture. Kindle, Hulu, iPod, iPad, apps. The tools are personal, portable, indispensable. We carry our world in our pocket. Change is the only constant. Insights will drive originality, and emerging technology will serve it up differently, more quickly and more globally. The world hates change, yet it is the only thing that has brought progress. We will keep borrowing ideas from American culture, and we will keep contributing to it, because culture and marketing are two sides of the same coin, a reflection of each generation's values its aspirations, its worries, its achievements, and its memories. When you're finished changing, you're finished. Here's to the next hundred years.